We have been in a season of commencement exercises since the end of April and all of May. Students processed in with tassels on the right, and then they are guided and instructed to take their tassels from the right to the left, signifying that there's a change, or the change in status between being a student and then a graduate. Academic hoods of the colors of the school and college and universities are often placed upon the shoulders, or maybe it's the colors of the degree, uh, master's degree that's conferred, and it's placed on the shoulders of the graduates before they go up to receive the diploma. There's a certain level of pomp and order until those caps are just tossed in the air with great abandon. The graduation marks a change in status from students to alumni, a student to employment, a student to further stu studies at a different institution. And there'll be this transition from the known and to the unknown. For the past four years, they developed a, a certain routine and a rhythm of being a student. And shortly after walking off the stage with a diploma in hand, they're, they're ready to walk off the campus as an alumni, ready for what is next. It is a day filled with hope as they take steps into the future that will be very different from their life the last four or five years as a student. Confident, unsure of next steps, I think it depends upon the day and upon what time of day you ask. For the past four years, they've been collecting tools to put in their toolbox, and now they're, they're ready to put them to use. They enter the unknown, well-equipped, but still uncertain of what tomorrow brings, even if they have a job that's already lined up. And there are going to be moments of discovery, there'll be moments of success, and moments of failure. Even while receiving growth that comes with the experiences while on the job, they're going to need a time of, of continuing education throughout. We all need continuing education. And those who embrace this concept of being a, a lifelong learner will be the ones that are eager to step out and, and take hold in life and will go very far in life as they seek to learn more and more. And those who have a posture of humility, even as successful as they become, they live and work with the understanding that there's more to learn, there's more to do, there are more discoveries to be made, and there's an openness to receive help and mentoring, counsel, and guidance along the way. But those who settle don't get too far. Those who act as if they have arrived will not see that there's more to discover what's around the bend. Those unwilling to try new things or rediscover the tools that have been, haven't been used in a while will often fall short of the very goals that they wrote out while they were in college ready to face the future. For the past two weeks, the high school students in our high schools in our area have been taking their turns and having commencement exercises. Centerville and, and Westfield High School had to, students had to wait patiently for their turn to finally have their day in the sun, to shine, to walk on that stage and receive diploma in hand. And before the graduation exercises and the days following, it's, there's a wide range of emotions and thoughts during this occasion. There's a relief, there's a sense of excitement, there's a sense of, of having accomplished something wonderful in life, in the classroom, in the band rooms, in the theaters, in the ball courts, in the ball fields. I mean, there's appreciation for what has been, and, and graduates get to share this joy with family and friends. But there's also an element of sadness as well as this chapter comes to a close, even as the seniors have had to deal with some senioritis, even though they're facing some great steps that they're signed on to before May 1st, there's still an element of sadness. And so it's natural to have a time of looking back through the years, of going through the pictures of all the first, the first day of, of day school, the first day of kindergarten, of middle school, the first day of high school, and we can see the growth in each person as we scroll through those pictures. There are pictures that capture friendships and special times, a time of, of looking back at formative experiences in, in life and, and places that have been visited that have all shaped our graduates they're too, they too are going from the known to the unknown. Only this time, as they get ready to venture out, they're not going to be under the watchful eye of parents or grandparents. 
friends who've been part of their journey for much of their life, they're getting ready to go in, in different directions. And just as graduation was circled on the calendar, so is the day of moving into that college dorm or, or going to that first day of training as they join the military. As our high school students graduate and venture forth, there will be moments of discovery, of success, and failure. There'll be moments of feeling alone, even when surrounded by people. There'll be a sense that I am the only one who feels anxious and uncertain and stressed. And there's some level of comfort comes when you realize I'm not the only one who's anxious about next steps. Those going off to college do so in anticipation of what is yet to come. There are more lessons, great time of learning, of deciding what tools to put in the toolbox to be prepared for life's next adventure. And so our graduates can look back and say, you know, 13 years of being in school is a long time. And yet as they turn to move forward, they'll realize what's before them. Days of new beginnings, days filled with midterms and term papers and finals. In the next four to seven years, if not more. And so parents find themselves in this place of, of letting go in the hopes that they have prepared their children well. And there'll be moments when the summer you feel like, have I said everything that's supposed to be said? Are there lessons that I haven't taught? Will there be that day when I can share even more fully as they head out? There will be things left unsaid. There will be lessons that can be shared later in life as they experience more of what life will come to them in the next four years. And certainly you can share with them at each stage of life. For our high school and college graduates this month has offered a time to reflect on the journey. And for those who are changing jobs or eyeing retirement or retiring, retiring and, and moving this year, it is a time of reflecting on what has been. Sure, there are more years than rear view mirror than the years that are before you in retirement, but there are days before you that are filled with new beginnings. And there's a future that is filled with hope. It is still a time of learning and discovering, of trying new endeavors, of learning something new to fill your time with meaningful experiences, taking in new sights, spending time with renewing relationships and to renew old hobbies that took a back seat while making a living. You know, life is filled with stages as we make this journey. And we see transition points as milestones. And they serve as markers for all of us. And we pause. We, we pause to, to celebrate them, but then we move on to, to what is next. And hopefully all the while we're, we're building on a, a strong foundation. And that is true as we go through our school years. That is true as we go through the career path that we take. It is also true in our faith. Our coming to faith was certainly a journey. It may have taken years to finally say yes to Jesus and respond to the grace that God has bestowed upon us. It may have taken years of grandparents and parents praying for us until we had that moment when we discover yes and say yes to Jesus Christ. That journey to faith may have had moments of doubt and even moments of, of wandering away from God and wandering, wandering away from church before finally acknowledging our need for God and having a great awareness that we are children of God who are loved by God. Our yes to God of having faith in Jesus Christ is not an end, it is a beginning. See, our yes doesn't signify that we understand that all there is to know about God, who is one God, one God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Today is Trinity Sunday, and this is one of the most challenging Sundays to preach if the pastor takes up the doctrine of the Trinity in a sermon. This is a hard doctrine to wrap our minds around, to speak of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and we're referring to one God that we relate to in three ways, or relates to us in three ways, and how can God both be in heaven and we can experience God's presence here in our midst of the Holy Spirit. And if you have mastered this doctrine, then I will stop preaching, and I'll let you come forward to finish the sermon. 
See, when I speak of the Trinity, I'm aware that there is an element of mystery here. And the fullness of God is just too much to narrow down to our level of comprehension. No matter how much we know about God, we have to understand that we're just simply scratching the surface, even with all the tools that we have. And yet, with this understanding that we have only scratched the surface, it shouldn't mean that we throw our hands in the air and give up trying. No, we are to hunger and thirst for the knowledge of God, to experience more and more of God's love each and every day. We're to know the one who knows us fully and loves us regardless. There are more revelations to be had. There are more experiences of being in the presence of the holy. The journey that follows our yes is to be a a lifelong journey. We may have come to have that moment of discovery, that moment of being able to connect the dots and say, aha, I know God now. I understand who God is in Jesus Christ. We may have that moment when we had our hearts strangely warmed. But from that moment is to be a dynamic journey of constant discovery and discipleship. Friends, if your faith is boring and static and not life-altering or life-enhancing, then there's a problem. See, God is not boring. God is not static. God desires for us to be on the move, for our faith to be a dynamic force in our life. Discipleship involves mission and worship, opening up the scriptures, not just for devotion, but opening up for life, uh, for study and for life application, as well as the sharing of our faith with others. And such a faith is to propel us forward, gives us hope to embrace a future that, yes, even now seems uncertain. This hope does not disappoint us because hope is based on our God who's been our help in ages past and our God will be with us with whatever is around the bend. Bishop Will Willimon says to follow Jesus is to be willing to go with him on a journey that takes your whole life to finish. This faith is big. You know, a few weeks ago, our confirmands came up here and they said yes to Jesus Christ. They said yes. They wrote statements of their faith that speaks to where they are in their understanding of who God is, where they are in their understanding of faith. And with such a statement, they were acknowledging what they know to be true today. But what they also acknowledge without writing it is what they don't yet know what is true. The same Holy Spirit was stirring among them will lead them along the way to even more discoveries and truths about God if they're so open and humble enough to know that there is still more to come, there's still more to experience, and still more to know. They said yes. And yes was sufficient, and their faith is sufficient for them, but this yes is to be lived out, and this yes is to be lived out for each and every one of us. They were confirmed and their confirmation class has ended, but the journey in many ways is just beginning. You know, at the end of that service, they came up and they received a a, a certificate that acknowledges this is a milestone in their journey of faith. But Pastor Marty and and Sean, they they didn't hand out a, a, a diploma saying you got this faith down pat, you've, you've achieved it, you, you, you're, you're now a graduate. See, not one of us ever graduates from faith, but we're to be actively striving to know more of Christ so that we can be better at living out our faith tomorrow than we are today, to be better at it tomorrow. And that we might be able to face the challenges that come tomorrow because we are nurturing our faith today. I often chuckle when I consider that the degree I earn from divinity school is called a master of divinity, as if anyone masters divinity and graduates from such. 
See, with God, there, there's always more, more to understand. There are more surprises. There's more of, of pushing us out of our comfort zones, more grace upon grace when we have fallen short of the high calling of living out our faith. There are more people to share our faith with, more strangers to welcome home. And so if you feel like your faith it has become dormant or static. Now is the perfect time to, to open up once more to, to God's sanctifying grace, God's perfecting grace in your life. And the Jesus that you once knew can be known again through the spirit of truth who reveals more, once more, the importance of following Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. But sadly, what happens when living the Christian faith is that some people never move beyond what they first learned to be true or we act like we've arrived at our destination when faith is always about the journey to what is next. Jesus says to the disciples after this rather long teaching known as his farewell discourse, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot handle them now. And some people think that this means that he's trying to, he's not going to let them know at this point all about the suffering and the death and the burial and about the persecution that they would face in the coming years. That's certainly one way to interpret this teaching. But he's saying that as they journey by faith, as they live as disciples, the spirit of truth will guide them and remind them of the very things that he had been instructing them throughout Today, what the Spirit of truth leads us to will be consistent with what has gone on before. The Holy Spirit is not making up new things along the way and asking us to deviate from the teaching of Jesus. However, as they learn about living in the way of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will guide them and guides us into our context, in our new places, so that we can best live out what it means to be a Christian disciple in this year, in this time, and in this place with all the challenges that we face. And the same is true for us today, for we are to be led by the spirit of truth, not the spirit of if it feels good, then just go ahead and do it. Or, or the spirit that says, you know, ah, we, we obviously have some feel-goods here and we have goosebumps, it must be of God. The spirit of truth is a far cry from the spirit that conforms to the truth that we want it to be. See, the world and the church are so different than when I started out in ministry. So different from where you started in your faith journey. I mean, given the changes in our culture, we have to consider how best to live out our faith today. So much has changed. Just think about all that has changed in our lives in the last three years. Not ten years, just in the last three years. I mean, the attractional model of church is gone, having understanding that most people have at least some knowledge of God and of some religious background is, is, is not true anymore. And yet we often are reluctant to change our way of evangelism. That means just open the door and people will come. That model hasn't worked since the 1990s. I mean, if 10 years ago you told me about the need for live stream worship and Zoom meetings... I would have told you, you're crazy. Before that, I'd have to ask, what's a Zoom meeting? If you told me when I first started out in ministry that American politics and the polarization thereof would hijack the church and have a greater influence on our theology than the church has on politics, I would have told you that's not possible. I just learned about virtual worship a couple months ago with the creation of avatars representing our likeness. And people from all around the country, if not the globe, can be in the same virtual space in a time of worship and they're, listening, they're sharing in prayer together and they're hearing a message. Just you wait until I create my avatar. You might recognize the voice, but when I create that avatar, you're not going to recognize me. For I'm going to be tall, dark, and handsome with that avatar. With that avatar, I'm going to have more hair on my head, and I'll be able to fit in skinny jeans. See, before the pandemic, virtual church 
would definitely fall on that line of there's more to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. See, when I consider a future filled with hope, my faith tells me that, that we are to avail ourselves to the spirit of truth, that same spirit of truth that was at work among those early disciples as they went from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and even with the other disciples who came after them as they went to the ends of the earth. We're to be open to the same spirit of truth who gave the early Methodists a pioneering spirit to take the gospel across the mountains and across the rivers long before there were roads and bridges. We need that same spirit of truth today. The same spirit of truth that was active in uniting a church that had long divided over the issue of slavery is to be at work today if we would just get out of the way and let the spirit of truth bring forth renewal and lead the church once more. Our faith tells us that the same spirit of truth will be ever active today in the life of the church declaring the things that are to come. Bringing forth Not a new thing, but renewal. I know you've heard me say this before. But see, I I don't want an American Jesus. I I don't want that Jesus. I, I don't want the Jesus who carries a Bible in one hand and the gun in the other. That's not my Jesus. It's not my Jesus. A Republican or Democrat Jesus, that's not my Jesus either. That isn't the Jesus of the gospel, but one that we get comfortable with, one that affirms our views and informs our views. Stop worshiping the gods that we make in our image, the gods who only offer what you want to hear and conform, confirms all your choices. Don't wade in the shallow end or stand along the shoreline getting your toes wet every now and then and call that faithfulness, call that discipleship, call that Christianity. But friends, we we need to set out into the deep to move from what is known into the unknown, trusting that the same Holy Spirit that was before us is still going to go before us to lead the way. Stop sipping on milk. But move to feasting on the spiritual food that we've been invited to feast on. And don't act like you've arrived when you've simply come to a way stop. Because there's more of the journey. Because we follow the one who is the way. And we're to go with Jesus, the one who calls us into a lifetime of discipleship where we can never graduate, where we can never retire. Commit or renew this day to be a lifelong learner. Seek to know the Jesus of the scriptures and be open to the spirit of truth who seeks to reveal more and more of the Jesus that we really need. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.